Hi, this is Eli Kranzberg, and welcome to this series on Realm, which is part of Native Instruments' Complete Instruments and Effects series. Now, it's a unique reverb. It features three reverb algorithms for a wide variety of spatial effects. And there are a couple of things unique and special about this reverb. For one, the pre-delay section on the left here with its feedback control is one of the standout features, and it allows for looping and generating granular effects and all kinds of interesting pitched metallic type effects when we dial up subtle amounts of pre-delay with full feedback. And we'll explore all that. Now, the freeze function here is, although nothing we haven't seen before in other reverbs, an interesting new way of using it when you combine it with the modulation settings and the sound design aspects of the granular and resonant type effects that we can get with the pre-delay and the feedback. Now, it's a simple interface, but we can further reduce it to thinking of it as being four discrete kind of sections. First, we have the file management bar on top with some functions over here. We'll go through them all. And then we have presets over here. And then we have an AB switch to compare two different variations within a preset. Now, on the left, we have the input section with pre-delay feedback and some basic filtering. The middle here is where we have our settings for the basic reverb and freeze function. We choose between the three different algorithms here, grounded, airy, and cosmic, and they all have different colors. And we can use the stepper buttons as well. We have a lock icon so that we can lock the mix ratio. So when we change presets, it'll always be preserved. A couple of conventions, we can obviously click and drag, but we can use shift for fine increments and then use command to snap back to a default value. And that's control click on Windows. Now, on the right side here, we have the settings to tweak the selected reverb algorithm, and they change slightly depending on which of these is chosen. So I want to take a kind of clinical look at the three different algorithms just to give you a general understanding of them. The first is grounded, and it's based on the paradigm of a room with strong early reflections and a dense reverb tail. And the size ranges from small ambiences to large chambers. So it's good for small room effects. Now, here I'm going to play it with a click. Now, the diffusion adjusts the texture of the reverb reflections. So as we turn to the right, we can soften the reflections. And then we have the size, which adjusts the swell and the reflection pattern of the reverb. So it gives the impression of different size spaces. And as we go to the right, it'll change from smaller to large. And I like that we can sweep it to get that pitched modulation. So you can see this is a very colorful sounding reverb. Now we have the density switch here. It looks like a blob. And that switches between two basic density modes for the reflection pattern. We have dense and sparser like that. So you can really hear the tail breaking apart. different qualities based on the density a smaller space they're more coherent and cohesive but the larger the space the more they break apart or we can go back to a stronger more denser density now we have decay which adjusts the length of the reverb or the reverb time and as we go to the right it'll go from short to long so something like this, you can get a very natural drum room sound or just a natural small room ambience. So this can be used in a kind of conventional setup. Now, when we get into the higher or longer decays, we're going to get into the realm of the next mode, which is airy. But just staying with this for a moment, we have the damping over here, which adjusts the tonal quality from bright to dark. So as we turn it to the right, it'll attenuate the higher frequencies. So let's get a longer tail. So you can really hear it damp, like having absorbent material on the wall of the space. And then just the basic amount of reverb. So you don't have to get a really overly saturated sound if you want. I'm leaving it up for now so we can explore. 
and they are frozen, that tail there. So it can stay like a kind of ambient wash in the background, but it's interesting freezing in conjunction with some of these settings, which we'll explore later in the series. Now, next we have Airy, and this is based on the paradigm of a hall with naturally dispersed early reflections and a smooth reverb tail. So here the size ranges from medium chambers to larger cathedrals, so we're getting into bigger spaces now. And again, we get that pitch sweeping effect, which I think is really cool and interesting when it's automated. So generally bigger spaces. And Fusion works similarly. And here, the modulation adjusts the amount of movement added to the reverb sound by changing the internal parameters of the reverb over time. So what does that mean? Well, if we turn the control to the right, it'll change the movement of the reverb from kind of this lush, smooth type of sound, strongly detuned. And you can hear it getting detuned. It's hard to tell on a static click, but you can hear it going down in pitch versus like that. And I'll leave the dampening fully open. There's that detuning effect, which again is really cool depending on the source you feed into it. Now, next we have Posbic, and this is not based on any traditional reverb algorithm, but it's kind of an abstract space for ambient soundscapes. Now, this algorithm is placed inside the pre-delay's feedback path, so it interacts very closely with the pre-delay and feedback parameters. And here, to give you an idea, it's very different. We have the size, which adjusts the swell, the shape, and decay. And as we turn to the right, we get small to large. We don't have the freeze function for this. We can go to denser or more sparsely diffuse patterns. And then the rate adjusts the speed of the movement added to the reverb with the modulation. Again, it's a very clinical look. But with different input sources, we get some really interesting kind of ambient soundscapes. I'm going to end off here, and in the next video, we'll explore the feedback and pre-delay controls, and then we'll put all of these to work in some musical contexts.